Sit. Sit. In the first video, we talked about how we can incorporate or teach the dog how to uh, use the focus exercise to teach the dog to look at us on command. Now, in this video, I want to talk about the instructions that we're going to use to extrapolate this to an actual walk so that we don't have Lucy feeling uh, insecure or upset when she sees another dog. As a matter of fact, we're going to use this exercise to redirect her attention. So what we're going to look for is a place where, like maybe a park, where there's a path that a lot of people walk their dogs. Best time to do this is usually around 5.30 or 6 o'clock at night. Now, we're in the Midwest right now, it's winter, so it's probably not a good time of the year to do it. So we have a month to really practice this until we get to the point where uh, the dog has it down fat well, and then hopefully at that point we're in spring and we have nicer weather. So what I'm gonna do is, um, let's say that the path is in front of me. I wanna find kind of a triangular line of view. So from I'm gonna, if the path goes this way in front of me, I'm gonna keep walking away from that path until I can find a distance that I can get Maggie to sit down while she sees another dog. It might have to be 150 yards away. But when we get to a distance that the other dog is far enough away, Maggie will not feel uh, intimidated or scared and she'll be able to, she'll be able to remain a sit. A dog won't sit if it perceives the other dog to be a threat. So once we find that distance, then what I'm gonna do, uh, and another thing that I can do to make sure that we have the right distance is hold the treat like this. And I, don't, I haven't done this with her, so I don't know if she'll do it, but these are soft, chewy treats. I want the dog to basically chew little bits of it off. Now, I can, as you can tell, I can, well, she's a, little, she's a little twitchy, but you can kind of change her direction by moving the treat. So the idea is to get her looking at that direction where the dogs are while she's nibbling on the treat. That's actually called counter conditioning. We're creating a positive association uh, while the dog's looking at something far enough away for it not to be threatened, uh, threatened or frightened about, and then we can cr gradually create a positive association. In this exercise, though, Karen's book, and again, it's called Feisty Fido, um, is we're gonna wait until that dog, uh, the reason we want a, line, a triangle line of view is, let's say that between here, I can the path and there's no obstructions, and I have a triangle, kind of like a baseball diamond that I can see. But over here, there's some trees that kind of obscure it. I can kind of see through the trees when somebody's coming, but I can't see. And over here, there's some trees. So I'm only gonna see the dog on this path for maybe 25 feet or whatever the distance is, uh, a short period of time. I'm gonna put my dog next to me on a, in a leash, on a leash, I put it in a sit, and I'm gonna kind of wait for a dog to come with its guardian walking down the path. And as soon as I see in through the trees that a dog is about to appear, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my field of vision and look down at uh, Maggie. Now, Maggie's gonna be looking in this direction. As soon as she sees the other dog, she's gonna be like, she'll kind of snap to her, probably lower her head and start focusing. I give her about one or two seconds, and then if she doesn't, uh, and I give her about one or two seconds, after one or two seconds, then I would say, focus. And as soon as she looks up to me, I'm gonna do the focus exercise like we did before. We're gonna keep on doing that at this distance. Now this might be, you might have to go to the park and do this five or six times without being able to uh, progress past this, and that's fine. We keep on doing this till the dog feels comfortable at this distance and knows as soon as I look up and another dog comes and the human says focus, I look up and I get those treats. I can look away from the other dog because it's so far away, it can't get to me right away. I'll hear it coming. So we're gonna keep on doing this. Again, we give it about one or two seconds to look up at us before we say focus. We wanna give it that opportunity to do it on its own. Once you've got enough repetition, the dog is gonna to start to associate. When a dog appears, my guardian always asks me to focus. So after a while, because the dog's going through association, the dog will see the other dog and will sit down and auto-focus. Karen calls this the auto-watch, I call it auto-focus. As soon as it does that, you should give your dog like five treats in a row. You want your dog to be like, holy cow, what did I just do? I just got the mother load of really, really good treats. When you get, uh, and when you get an autofocus, that's a good one to end on unless you just started. Always end when you're training your dog or doing an exercise on a good one so the dog has a positive re recollection of it. So once I've done that and the dog, uh, I get an auto, uh, autofocus, then I come back the next day at that same distance and I keep practicing that until I get five auto focuses in a row. So five dogs in a row come by and my dog looks up at me immediately each time and I give it the treats. Once I get five in a row, then I would take one, next time I come back to practice it, I would take one step closer to that path and keep repeating the process until I get five auto watches in a row at that distance and keep on going. Now, as you can tell, if we're 150 feet away, this might take a lot of practice, but the dog, the dogs, uh, the more that we practice this, the more they see a dog and nothing bad happens, in fact, something good happens, 
but the dog only, they see the dog for a second and then they turn their line of vision towards you. So they're not looking at the dog. Dogs can only really focus on one thing at a time. Over time, this does create a situation where it's almost a little bit of counter condition because the dog starts to associate when another dog comes, if I look at my human, I get a treat and I don't have to interact with the other dog. Eventually, you'll get to the point where the, the path is literally a half a foot in front of you and the dog sees the other dog and sits down and looks up at you. Now, there's a couple deviations for this. If, we're walk, if we have a dog that's walking and it's just full of life and it's just barking and jumping and running around, you should expect Maggie to be more reactive to that sort of dog. And that doesn't mean that we have a setback. That's probably more isolated to that particular dog. Um, now, if you don't have a place where you can find this field of vision where you have these, you might want to like engage, uh, if you have some friends that have dogs, ask them, hey, can, can we start meeting every day at 530? Can you walk your dog or go to where they walk their dog? And you go ahead of them on the trail until you find one. The Keystone Trail in Omaha is a great place to do this. This is the Papio Trail. And the Papio right Trail is right here. And there are places there where you'll be able to, find, able to find enough distance where your dog feels comfortable. But it's key. She cannot feel scared or frightened. That will invalidate all the work we're doing. So this is a process that takes time and practice. But if you do it properly, eventually the dog sees another dog and is like, I like so dogs. everybody walks down this street here with their dogs. Mm -hmm. If I stood out here in our driveway, is that enough of a triangle? Um, you might have a problem with uh, this territory. being your dog's area and a territorial issue. So I would like to find a more neutral territory. You could in a pinch, but I would rather find, have you find a neutral territory. Now, what happens if we're in the process? Now, you don't want to use this te technique while you're in the process of doing this. When you're walking your dog, you don't want to necessarily say, Get, try to do a focus. Now you can eventually get to that point when you're walking a dog, and that's what we want to do. And I, I, I guess I shouldn't say you can't because I have one client, and a lot of clients do it actually, where the dog sees another dog and you're walking towards them, the dog just looks up at you and keeps on walking, and you continue walking, you're holding the treat here, and then the dog's not looking or reacting to the other dog, and then you give it the treat, or you move a little bit down the sidewalk give, and then practice the focus exercise. At first we do the focus with the dog sitting, but eventually we'd like to be able to do it while it's walking. And then the other dog can actually pass by. Your dog's looking, not even looking at the other dog. That takes a lot of time and effort. And then again, she's a very nervous dog. So it's gonna, we have to go with slow steps at her speed. But eventually you get to the point where she can do that. But while you're in the process of practicing this, let's say that a dog comes around the corner while you're on a walk and you weren't prepared for it. You don't have time to stay focus. Well, what you wanna do is practice a U-turn. So when you're walking your dog, and I wanna practice with, with her by herself and out with Lucy, Every once in a while, walk down, you know, walk around the block, and then every third driveway, just do a complete, just do a U-turn, and then walk to the previous driveway, do another U-turn, and then walk back. And so what I do is, as soon as I turn, I have a treat here, and I pop in the dog's mouth, and I say turn or you or whatever you want to say. So this way, the dog has practice at also turning, because you might see the dog before your dog sees it, and you just turn, you eliminate it out of the, your dog's sight, and now you can walk around a car, walk down somebody's driveway, walk away from, so your dog's not going to confront that other dog. We don't want your dog to practice reacting to other dogs while we're doing this. We want to limit that as much as possible. All right, so this is a very, very, uh, now I've added my own little twist to this, but this is the same concept that you can get out of uh, the book Feisty Fighter by Karen London. Um, it, there's a lot more detail to it. Uh, it's a very easy read. So if you do have a dog that's leash reactive, I suggest you uh, check out that book because it'll help.